So I was recently recommended this Netflix miniseries. It's called Behind Her Eyes. And it sparked my attention and I wanted to do a video about it because it talks about lucid dreaming. Now, um, in my channel, I focus a lot on the brain, how it works, like I say, what makes you tick, but also what makes you talk. And I wanted to explain the, not only the, the science behind lucid dreaming, but also ways that you can do it. Of course, explain what lucid dreaming is, um, my personal experience, and of course, if you have subscribed to my channel, if not, button somewhere here, and if you're following me on YouTube, how does lucid dreaming have to do with personal development and emotional abuse and manipulation, which are things that I really focus on. Now, if you have no idea who I am, my name is Olympia. Uh, with my studies in cognitive neuroscience and art history, what I like to do? I like to dissect that pretty little brain of yours to see what makes you tick, but also what makes you talk. Now, before we move on, let's just smash that subscribe button and ring that bell for your weekly Thursday videos. And let's start. Lucid dreaming is being aware that you are in a dream while you're dreaming. So it's kind of a self-awareness thing. Now, it's become really popular lately with Inception and now with uh, the mini Netflix series Behind Her Eyes, but it's actually a pretty old term. It was It's actually something that was observed way back in the ancient Greek times by the philosopher Aristotle, uh, where he described a sense of self-awareness in a dream. Now, lucid dreaming has various types, but also very um, extents, I guess you would say. So one type of lucid dreaming is that you are in a dream and whatever's happening to you, you realize that you're in a dream. But the second, time, the second type of uh, lucid dreaming, which is my favorite and which I used to do a lot when I was younger, been trying to get back into it, is that you actually control the dream. Now, this is pretty cool because uh, you can actually choose what you want to do in your dream. And because you are dreaming, um, there's no limits. Now, a little science behind it. I'm not going to be really extensive about this, but lucid dreaming usually happens during a uh, rapid eye movement, REM sleep. It's the type of sleep that we go into um, about after 90 minutes. And it's the more, the more, the more deep sleep. It's the the part of the cycle, the sleep cycle that we get the most rest from. If you've watched Behind Her Eyes, you notice that the characters that are, that are lucid dreaming, their eyeballs are kind of going like this. Like this, on, under their eyelids. And that's where usually a uh, lucid dreaming occurs. And some scientists say it's a state between uh, consciousness and the dream state. So everything up here in your little prefrontal cortex um, is awake. Even your senses are heightened, um, but you are in your sleep state. Now, I used to um, lucid dream a lot when I was younger. Haven't really done it lately. Um, and lucid dreaming really helps, especially with recurring nightmares and night terrors. If you've seen Behind Your Eyes, I highly recommend it. A first few episodes, they talk about lucid dreaming. Uh, you'll see that this person has a recurring night terrors, but it also helps you reduce anxiety. So my experience of lucid dreaming. So when I was younger, um, obviously one of the, I guess, dreams when, we, when we're young is our ability to fly or the ability to be invisible or, Anyways, my experience was that um, I was in a dream and I realized that I was in a dream and I thought, you know what? I know that I can't die. I know that I can control this dream. So uh, basically, I just imagined myself on the top of a building. I'm not like it was nothing to do with being suicidal or anything, but literally that the fact that I knew I couldn't die and I knew that once I jumped off that building, I would be able to fly. The other thing, uh, when I was in more of my teenage years, um, I had a thing for Johnny Depp. And before your mind goes to the little naughty place, I was just a teenager. So I imagined making out with Johnny Depp. By the way, Johnny Depp, if you ever see this, you're okay. And then later on, it was more complex stuff, like getting into the university I wanted or um, getting some, some kind of achievement or something. and. What I really found really, what I found really, really cool was that your senses are heightened during lucid dreaming, or at least for me. And for example, one night or anyways, during my dream, I was craving chocolate, which is weird because I don't really eat a lot of chocolate, but I was craving chocolate and I knew I was dreaming. So I was like, 
okay, I'm going to imagine a door, opening the door, and inside there's going to be, and like it was going to be filled with chocolate, and not only chocolate, wa waffles with chocolate, pancakes with chocolate, muffins with chocolate, and the coolest part is that I could actually taste it. I could actually um, feel the texture. So those are my experience of lucid dreaming. So how do you do this? How Because it's, it's pretty awesome. I mean, think about it. Like, there's no limits. So a few things you can do is develop a healthy uh, sleeping schedule. Excuse me. So that means, uh, like, um, avoiding uh, caffeine and alcohol before you go to bed, avoiding screens and electronics, uh, exercising daily, meditating, keeping a, a dream journal. All these things have shown to help. But what I found that is really helpful, and this is actually what is something that they do in the movie, which is one of the reasons why I want to do a video about it, because I kind of relate it to it, is what has actually been called reality checks. So reality checks means that you train your brain to do something that you've been doing in your daily life um, in reality, to, and that makes it more probable that you would do it in your sleep. What do I mean like this? by this? So in the movie, for example, the woman counts her fingers. Um, the other thing you can do is look at your fingers and see if you have 10 fingers or if you have like, an, a, like one more finger or something like that. Uh, mirrors. If you look in a mirror in your dream, your reflection will either be distorted or it won't be the same. Reading text in your dream. If you read text and you reread whatever and you reread that, that sentence, you'll notice that the words will change. They will never be the same. These are just something that dream experts have um, found to be reality checks in dream. Another thing is solid objects. So for example, putting your hand against the wall. Now, if you're dreaming, uh, you your hand will go right through the wall. Another one is time. In your dream, if you watch a clock, time will constantly change. You won't. It won't actually go within seconds. And another thing which I found really um, uh, fascinating, but it's also something that I used to do without even realizing it, is breathing. So if you uh, pinch your nose in your dream and see that you can still breathe through your nose, um, that's an indication that you're dreaming. Now, this is where the little brain parts comes in, which I love. You can't expect to fall asleep and for this to happen um, because you haven't developed this habit. Uh, we are creatures of habit we by doing something over and over again we create a little pathway in our brain um i always uh, preach on neuroplasticity which basically means that our brain is constantly evolving so you need to do these things in your daily life to create a habit so that way and when you fall asleep you will subconsciously do it because you've consciously consciously done this for so long so here's the part where i promise you my little connection with emotional um abuse i believe now, I haven't really looked up the science, but I think it's um, it's a logical train of thought that people that are emotionally abused or ab any abuse in general um, are more likely to lucid dream. The thing is with abuse is that it signifies a lack of control. The abuser, the control, the, the control freak, aka the abuser, has complete control of you, especially at a younger age. And because you lack this control, because there are other things that are preventing you from living the life you want, and I'm not talking about jumping off a building here, of, of course, um, subconsciously you are more likely to lucid dream because you are allowed an outlet. You're allowed a sense of control, even if it's in your subconscious. Because consciously you have no control. You are given into the abuser. But subconsciously, um, your brain gets because this is actually this uh, this has actually been shown in lucid dream, lucid dreaming it reduces anxiety so all these pent up emotions all this anxiety uh, through lucid dreaming uh, can minimize um, can be minimized and that way I believe that people that are actually abused are more likely to lucid dream now. Um, I hope you found this video um, useful and informative. Let me know if you've ever lucid dreamed. Let me know what kind of lucid dreaming. Did you just know that you were dreaming or did you actually manage to gain control of your dream? Now, if you haven't already, make sure to smash the subscribe button. Some are here. Uh, give me a huge thumbs up to make mom longer than love me. Uh, ring that bell for your weekly Thursday videos. And that's it, folks.